Hello everyone, I'm Nietzsche Hone, and I've been spending this week doing a lot of limited review videos, helping people get ready for the new Rivals of Ixalan draft format. And so far, I've looked at all of the cards in the set and talked about, you know, how each of them will be in the format. And this is kind of a condensed Cliff's Notes version of some of that. In this video, I'm going to be ranking my picks for the best commons and uncommons in each color. Um, you know, it's a much shorter video. Instead of spending hours listening to me talk about cards, you can sort of get a quick overview of what cards I think are going to be the best in this format, which ones are worth taking early at the lower rarities, and that's important to know because you're going to be seeing a lot more of these than you are of bomb rare. So let's go ahead and get started with white, where I think the third best common is Divine Verdict. It's not the kind of removal spell that you would call premium. It's not even the kind you really want to start a draft with, but it's the kind you'll play one to two of in basically every white deck uh, if you have to. I mean, if you get upgrades on removal, you'll play it over it, but it is a fine card. Uh, it destroys creatures only if they're attacking or blocking, and it costs a large amount of mana, and that's what keeps it from being premium, but it is a removal spell, and you need them. I like Exultant Sky Marcher a little more. It looks a little more boring, I know, but it's a 3-mana 2-3 flyer with a relevant creature type, and those stats are pretty nice. I mean, that that's not a stats line you see very often at common, and especially not on a relevant creature type. It's also not a card I want to be first picking, um, but, you know, by the p pick five or six, I think Exultant Sky Marcher is pretty good. I do think the best white common is first pickable, and that is Luminous Bonds. It's pacifism, but it costs one more mana. Uh, you know, it is premium removal. It shuts down most creatures. It does have the downside, of course, of not stopping static or activated abilities, but attacking and blocking is like 95% of what creatures do, and a lot of creatures are just shut down if they can't do that. So Luminous Bonds is first pickable, and there are, you know, two other pretty solid white commons as well. Let's look at white uncommons. I think all three of the white uncommons are potentially first pickable, some of them in, in a weaker pack situation. So let's, the first one, I think, is Forerunner of the Legion, who is only going to be good if you end up in a vampire deck. But if you first pick it and end up in said vampire deck, it's going to be a very good card. It lets you find a vampire and put it on top of your library. And then every time you play a vampire when it's in play, you get to give plus one plus one to one of your other creatures. It can be a random creature with flying, by the way. It doesn't have to be a vampire, um, which is nice in this heavily tribal set to see something that doesn't say it can only pump a vampire. You have to play a vampire to get the trigger, but the trigger can go on to any creature. The next best white uncommon is Majestic Helioptorus. It's also not going to be very good unless you end up in a dinosaur deck, but it is actually playable if you don't, unlike Forerunner of the Legion. If you don't end up in vampires, it's just a dud. Uh, Majestic Helioptorus giving flying to one of your other dinosaurs when it attacks is great. I um, mean, it has fine stats itself. It's nothing special, but I think both of these are first pickable. They are sort of emblematic of this format in that there are some times where you're going to start a draft with a first pick that is like very tribal and pigeonholed in a certain way into that tribe. And sometimes things will pan out and that card will be first pick caliber. Other times you just won't play it or it won't be as good. However, the best white uncommon is good in just any white deck and you can feel very good about first picking it. And that is Baffling End. It's just a very efficient removal spell. It exiles a creature. It does have to have converted mana cost three or less, but that's most creatures in the format. Uh, some people I think will get concerned about the fact that when it leaves the battlefield, they get a dinosaur back. But think about other removal effects like we've had that we've had like this before. They exile the creature and then give them the creature back if they blow up the card. In this case, chances are the 3-3 dinosaur with trample will be a slight upgrade over what you exiled. But it getting blown up really isn't going to happen that often anyway. It's just a very efficient removal spell. You will play like two or three of them in every white deck if you can. And you should be happy first picking it. Let's move on to blue. I think the third best blue common is Kite Sail Corsair. It's just, you know, an efficient attacker with a relevant creature type, a 2-mana two 2-1. Two uh, and flying when it attacks is great. It's just going to be hard for people to stop early. It enables raid. It carries equipment well. And those are all things that are pretty good in this format. Uh, Deadeye Rig Hauler is next. Uh, it is a mana war effect, but keep in mind it is only going to mana war, in other words, bounce something, if you have raid active, which means you can't bounce something before combat. However, if you're attacking with like flyers in the air and then playing Dead Eye Rig Hauler and bouncing their like five mana dinosaur, that still feels pretty good. I think it's still a very good common, even though you can't play it in your first main phase to bounce your opponent's uh, blocker, but it's, it's still a very good common. Um, and I think close to being first pickable, not quite though. Water Knot, though, is, it's just like, you know, your standard good blue removal spell. It taps something down and keeps it from untapping. Um, 
again, kind of like the pacifism effect, it does allow your opponent to still have activated abilities going on and static abilities. But what do you want? It's a common removal spell. But it is worth first picking. It's solid. It's also worth noting every enchantment-based removal spell has both a little bit of upside and a little bit of downside in this format in a weird way because of the ascend mechanic. When you're playing Water Knot, you're going to ascend more quickly, but you're also letting your opponent keep a permanent in play, so they might ascend more quickly. That's just a little side note about ascend in general. Let's look at Blue's best uncommons. I think all three of these are first pickable. Uh, Riverwise Augur is the first of them. A 4-mana 2-2 two, two Merfolk, so it has a relevant creature type, but, but it doesn't have good stats. What it has is an amazing activated ability where you get to draw three cards and put two from your hand on top of your library in any order. What this means is it's at least netting you one card, right? That's definitely what it's doing. Even if you just look at it as raw card advantage, this is a two for one most of the time. But in addition to that, it provides some card selection because if you have like two other things in your hand, you can get rid of them uh, and put them on top of your library. Sure, you'll draw them eventually, but you get to increase the uh, how good the cards in your hand are temporarily. And it's a very good card. It gets better with blink effects and stuff like that. The next blue uncommon, I think, is Siren Reaver. Another one, I, like I said, I'd be fine first picking. Its fail case is a 4-mana 3-2 with flying that ha has a relevant creature type in Pirate. But it also has Raid, and you can activate that pretty easily, like by playing our Corsair we saw earlier, and have it only cost 3 mana, which is going to be very difficult for your opponent to stop in the air that early in the game. The best blue uncommon, though, I think, is Expel from Orozca. Uh, I could sort of see either Siren Reaver or Riverwise Augur end up being better than Expel from Araska, but I want to start Expel here. This is because Disperse effects are always good. Two mana, Bounce, and Non-Land Permanent, They're, those are always good things at instant speed. This has an insane upside, though, if you get to Ascend, where you put the Permanent on top of its owner's library instead. And that might sound like a minor difference, but it's not, because your average Bounce effect is only giving you tempo. In other words, you're making your opponent recast something that they paid way more than two mana for in most cases. Um, so you're sort of slowing them down, and you're making them, you know, it can be really backbreaking if you bounce like a six or seven drop creature or something like that. Uh, but when you actually put the card on top of your opponent's library, you're not only getting tempo, you're actually costing them a card because the card they were going to draw is now a card that they once had in play. So they're losing a card and drawing it again. So it has an insane amount of ascend upside, and it's good even if you can't ascend. Now let's move to black. The third best black common, I think, I, I struggled here whether I wanted to what I wanted to include as a third best black common. I think there are several that might be. But in the end, I chose Voracious Vampire. Um, this thing is going to be great in vampire decks, and it's going to be okay in a deck that doesn't end up like with a really critical mass of vampires. The fact that it immediately impacts the board by making like your 2-drop vampire uh, a 3-2 menace until end of turn uh, is great. That just gives you a lot of value. And then it has a decent body itself and menace, so it's not the easiest to block. The other cards I thought about including here as a third best black common is the 2-mana 1-1 one, one Vampire who you draw a card and lose one life when it comes into play. That's the other one that I sort of had here at one point, but in the end decided to go with Voracious Vampire. Uh, it does require that you end up in a Vampire deck for things to be perfect with it, but I think it has enough upside that I think it's a third best black common. Don't get me wrong, though, it's not really first pickable, but if you see it like pick three or four or five, I mean, I think at that point you can maybe say vampires are open enough, I'm going to jump in here. Next, we have Impale, which is just, you know, nothing special. It's just the four mana sorcery speed destroy target creature effect that black usually seems to get. Um, it's not super efficient. It's not instant speed. You're not going to get blowouts with it, but hey, it can kill anything. Um, and you will first pick this in some weaker packs where there aren't like premium removal spells, which I think this is like right on the cusp of being premium if it's not quite premium. It's like lower premium, you know, if it is. Um, or in packs that don't have like really great creatures or rares or whatever. You will first pick it and most black decks will play, you know, as many of these as they can get their hands on if they want to. If this format ends up being incredibly fast, a card like Impale could end up actually being pretty clunky if all it's ever doing is killing two or three drops. But I think this format's going to be a little slower than its predecessor. And I think the best black common is Moment of Craving. That's because it's an instant speed removal spell. It kills a lot of creatures. And the nice thing about black removal spells that give minus whatever, minus whatever, is that you don't necessarily have to kill the creature outright. You can kill, you can, you can weaken the creature and then block it with one of your other creatures. 
and have your creature still survive and still trade one for one. Um, and, and that's the nice flexibility that spells like this have. It also happens to gain you life, which a few cards actually care about. And even if no cards care about it, that's some nice additional value to add to a card. I do think Moment of Craving is first pickable a lot of the time. Um, and Impale a little less often. And Voracious Vampire, not really at all. But it is going to be like the best common vampire payoff, uh, at least in black. No, I think just in general, it's the best black... I mean, the best vampire payoff at common in this format, now that I think about it. Let's move to the black uncommons. Once again, I think all the uncommons are first pickable. This doesn't always happen, but so far, you know, we're three for three on all the uncommons being cards that I could see first picking in some scenarios. Uh, the third best one, I think, is Forerunner of the Coalition. The vampire, or rather the pirate Forerunner, it lets you search your library for, obviously, a pirate. Put it on top of your library, and it makes every pirate you comes into play... Uh, it's, take away one of your opponent's life. Um, that's a nice little ability to add, and you can find your best pirate and get ready to play it. Uh, next, we have Reaver Ambush, which is just an efficient removal spell that kills mostly smaller creatures. It's first pickable more of the time. Um, Forerunner of the Coalition is, but it has the same problem that a lot of these tribal cards do. If you don't end up in Pirates, it's a complete dud. So you only pick it if you're like in a pack where there's just like not anything really uh that's catching your eye no, no no really good stuff going on and you know that its ceiling is high enough that it's worth the risk to take it reaver ambush meanwhile is good in any black deck it kills a lot of creatures it does it at instant speed and it does it at a relatively efficient mana cost the best black uncommon is i think to go out on a limb here the best uncommon in the entire set and one you're going to first pick happily over most rares in the format and that is ravenous chupacabra it's just a 4-mana 2-2 two -two that kills a creature when it comes into play, and that is incredible. Um, you know, obviously it's removal, so, you know, that's always good. But it's going to be a 2-for-1 most of the time. You can also bring it back from your graveyard, get the ability again. You can blink it. You can do all sorts of things with it to get to kill multiple creatures but just one Chupacabra. Uh, it's a great card. You will be first picking it most of the time that you see it. And because of that, you're not really going to see it very often. And even if you just get it, like, passed to you, it's a pretty good sign the guy to your right is not in black. So keep that in mind. Ravenous Chupacabra is incredibly strong. Let's move to red. In red, I think the third best common is Goblin Trailblazer. Nothing special, just a little evasive creature with a useful creature type in Pirate. Um, it helps you it, enable raid in the early game, and it will carry equipment well, especially, you know, putting Pirate's Cutlass on this guy is very appealing. Swaggering Corsair is going to be a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three enough of the time that I think you're going to be wanting to play it in most red decks, especially in a pirate deck where that creature type matters. Neither of these are anywhere near first pickable, though, so keep that in mind. However, I do think Bombard, which for some reason I had a hard time saying in my set review, I kept calling it Bombard which I guess isn't a huge difference, but Bombard is a good card, a uh, very good card. It is a first pickable common. It's very efficient, kills a lot of things, trades up for a lot of things at instant speed, and you can blow your opponent out if they're playing auras or combat tricks or whatever by playing this in response. So only one of the commons is first pickable, but what about the uncommons? Do they continue to all be cards I would feel like I can first pick most of the time? And unfortunately, I think the answer is... No. Uh, the third best red uncommon is Stormfleet Swashbuckler, which, don't get me wrong, is good. But it's just a two-mana 2-2 two -two that in the late game gets double strike. Yeah, sure, that's fine. It's also a pirate, but, you know, it's not that good. I would take Bombard over it, and that's it's a common, obviously. So, uh, yeah, not, not a great uncommon, but it is a good one. It wouldn't make this list if it wasn't. Next, we have Reckless Rage. Now, this one comes with some caveat. It's going to be very powerful in some decks, in decks that have lots of creatures that have three or more toughness, or in decks that have lots of creatures within rage, it's going to give you a lot of value by killing one of your opponent's creatures and helping you uh, activate an enrage trigger. But that's not going to be the case all the time, so it's another one of these cards that's like, you know, you can first pick it because it's going to have a really high ceiling in the right deck, but if you don't end up in the right deck, like if you end up in a pirate deck, Reckless Rage isn't going to be that good. You're just going to two-for-one yourself most of the time. It is efficient, but, you know, I don't know if it's efficient enough to be wanting to two-for-one yourself. I do think the best red uncommon is first pickable, and that is Needletooth Raptor, uh, who works relatively well with Reckless Rage. It does just kill it outright. But Re Needletooth Raptor is nice because, uh, at worst, in most scenarios anyway, 
uh, it is going to be the kind of creature that just when it dies kills something because five damage is enough to kill most things and damage is the most common way to kill it. If your opponent ends up having to use a removal spell to kill it, chances are they're spending the same or more mana, like a straight up kill removal spell because obviously they don't want to be doing damage to it. Uh, if they do that, they're not really going to be getting a lot of value either. And if your opponent can't kill it, it really warps the game. Your opponent has to find ways to attack you in the air, for example, uh, rather than attack you on the ground, because if they attack you on the ground, you're going to find a way to really make them pay. Like, if they attack with a 2-2 two -two and a 5-5, five -five, they're really in trouble, because obviously you can just block the 2-2 two -two and kill the 5-5 five -five with the Enrage trigger. And that all goes without talking about the various ways there are to trigger Enrage at will, which include Reckless Rage, but there are other ways to only do one damage, which won't quite, which will not kill Needletooth Raptor and allow you to get it enraged again, and that's when you're getting a lot of value. Overall, though, the red uncommons are kind of underwhelming, and the Reckless Rage and Needletooth Raptor, neither of them are really uh, wanting you to be aggressive, which is a little strange. But, uh, you know, they're all fine uncommons, Needletooth Raptor especially. Now let's look at green. I think the third best green common is Jade Craft Artisan. This card's just really good. Um, I think it's kind of sneaky good people... They don't print cards with this effect that often, uh, but every time they do, they end up overperforming. And by that effect, I mean a creature that comes into play who has decent stats, who pumps another creature you already have in play um, until end of turn permanently. And, and this isn't a tribal effect like the vampire we looked at earlier. It will pump anything. And plus two plus two is a substantial amount. It's going to make you have way more profitable attacks than you would have otherwise. And it leaves behind some decent stats, and it happens to be a merfolk. So all of that makes it pretty good. I don't think I would be ecstatic about first picking it, but I could, in like one of the weakest packs ever, you, you probably could. Um, and you're going to want this in most of your decks. It's worth noting, it's just as good and maybe better in a dinosaur deck where you can pump a creature with Enrage, for example, those raptors, and attack with it and your opponent just really can't do anything about it. Um, but it's good in a merfolk deck too, just because it is a merfolk. Hunt the Weak, I think, is the next best green common um, you know, it is a clunky removal spell, but it does permanently make your creature bigger, and it works well with merfolk, who like plus one plus one counters, and with dinosaurs, who like enrage, because it helps you trigger both of those things. Um, it's again, not like, not a card you really want to be first picking, but hey, at least it's removal. Always keep in mind with fight effects like this, that if your opponent has mana up, you should probably not try to cast it, assuming they have cards in hand, because you can get completely and utterly blown out. And that's what keeps them from being really good. If your opponent kills your creature that you're wanting to fight with in response to this, you probably just lost the game. I'm not even just saying you're just like going to be behind. There's a good chance that that exchange loses you the game. If things go your way, well, maybe you'll win the game, but it's not quite as swingy in your favor if things go right as they are if things go wrong. Uh, the best green common, I think, is Jungle Born Pioneer, and I think it is first pickable. Um, a three mana 2 2 that comes into play and makes another creature. This is sort of a creature we've seen time and time again, frequently green. We've seen it white a few times. And they've always been pretty good. Uh, you know, two bodies at that early stage of the game adds a lot to the table. And in this case, they're both merfolk, and that matters. And, uh, you know, for a minor bit of upside, it also helps you ascend because it gives you two permanents for the price of one. So Jungleborn Pioneer is the only one of those that I think is first pickable. Uh, let's look at the uncommons in green, though. I think all the green uncommons are first pickable. So red is really the only color that got hung out to dry there. I think all the other best uncommons are cards that I can see myself first picking, if only in like mediocre packs, um, but still they're strong enough that, you know, starting my draft that way wouldn't make me feel bad, which is not the case with red. So, but anyway, let's look at the green ones. First up, we have Swift Warden, which is a three mana, three, three with flash, which is already a good card, by the way, but... It brings with it some extra merfolk synergy in that you can give hexproof to one of your other merfolk so you can basically counter a removal spell. It's very rarely going to be able to both flash in and like block a 2-2 and make hexproof matter. That's the one thing, you know, that's like the dream value-wise. That would give you a two-for-one, right? But it's going to give you a two-for-one anyway because you're making one of your opponent's removal spells do nothing and then you have a 3-3 body in play. So it's good even if you can't do both in the same turn, which you won't be able to 99% of the time. Uh, the next green, best green uncommon is Thrashing Brontodon. It's nice that it's not tribal in any way, 
Granted, Swift Warden uh, is good, even if you have no Merfolk, but it's definitely better if you do. Thrashing Bronodon just gives you a huge body for 3 mana, a 3-4, and it destroys artifacts and enchantments. And if you didn't notice, there are a lot of artifacts, uh, not artifacts, there's a few artifacts, but a lot of enchantments running around in this format, including enchantment-based removal, auras that help power up creatures, they're around. So Thrashing Brontodon, being able to just have it in your main board as this big creature with a useful creature type who has some extra utility is pretty nice. Um, and it's a good first pick. It'll be played in any green deck, too. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I think the best green uncommon is Crested Herd Caller. Um, and if there's any card, I think, that can give a run for uh, its money to the Chupacabra, it's Crested Herd Caller. It's a very strong uncommon. Six mana and six mana for six, six worth of stats, all of which has Trample, is very good. It's also, you know, side note, good with Ascend because it gives you two permanents for the price of one. And they happen to have a useful creature type of Dinosaur. Well, that does it for my picks. In the comments, let me know what you think I got right, what you think I got wrong. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so others can enjoy it too. If you want to see more Magic the Gathering content, including Rivals of Ixalan drafts coming next week, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.